So now in this video, we're going to put together a current source circuit. And to set the current, we're going to take the 741 op amp here. It's one of my op amp videos. And uh, wire it up similar to this. So we will give it a voltage. Based on that voltage, we'll have a certain amount of current going through the load and the resistor. The amount of current depends on the resistance of the resistor. So the load can change. And as long as you stay within limits, the current is expected to be whatever the voltage in is divided by the resistor. And I put R1 there just to make it a little more obvious that it's a particular resistor and not total resistance or anything. But in any case, as uh, seen with uh, pretty much all op amp videos, when you have negative feedback, then the op amp, because it can change the voltage at the output, it tries to hold the voltage the same at the inverting input as it is at the non-inverting input. So it does what it can to hold that voltage and then that voltage goes across the resistor there. No matter what the load is because it raises the voltage as needed to get the voltage at the output as needed to get that voltage equal. And uh, so we got the voltage in, the voltage should be the same right there and then in relationship to ground, our zero volt reference point, the resistor will set a current. And here is the circuit we're going to do. So if you're not aware, this is the schematic symbol indicating you're measuring current there. And when you're measuring current, the meter is kind of like a piece of wire. So you don't have to have it there even if you see the symbol there. You can just connect that directly. And uh, But we're going to take current measurement, so I thought I would add that there. Now, for the uh, load, let's go to, or actually the resistor. We're going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor because that goes to virtual ground. The reason why I'm going to use 1 kilo ohm is that for every volt you put across it, you'll get 1 milliamp of current. 1,000 ohms of resistance, milli is 1 thousandth of whatever number you're using so one thousandth of one is one milliamp so it makes the math really easy for every volt there's one milliamp of current going through so that's right there and uh, I mean I kind of squeeze it in there this is my virtual ground integrated circuit 2426 TLE 2426 is how you'll probably find it if you're uh, looking for it it doesn't always say TLE on the part though. So in any case, that's our virtual ground. It's halfway between the rails there. I have the uh, power supply set to 24 volts. It's off right now though. And uh, this splits it, gives us a halfway point. So in relationship to our virtual ground now, we'll have plus 12 volts or negative 12 volts. And so we got the resistor there. Now, we're gonna take these LEDs here. And as I said, we may have a meter there, we may not. So what I'm gonna do, well, we'll come to that in a second. I'm gonna take a green LED. I want the green LED to light up when the output's more negative. So the output is over here, pin number uh, six right there. So I'm gonna leave the short lead closer to uh, the uh, output there. And then the long lead, the anode, I'm putting to where that resistor is, right there. You can see we're connecting right to that point. And we're gonna take a red LED and I'm going to wire it the other way. I want it to light up when the output's more positive. And so the output of the op amp is down here. And so I'll wire it right there. And uh, the short lead, the cathode, is going to where that resistor is, right there. So there's the LEDs, the resistor, and ground. LEDs, resistor, ground. As you can see here, where the LEDs connect to the resistor is where we have our feedback, our negative feedback. So I'm gonna plug that in where the resistor is that connects to the LEDs. Actually does not want to go into that spot. So some of these, this is an older board now. I used it quite a bit. And if I plug something in there with off size pins or whatever, it kind of damages the board a little bit. So that's going to the inverting input, our feedback directly to the inverting input. Some people may call that the negative input right there. And then the non-inverting inputs down here. And 
that's going to go to a trim pot where we can adjust the voltage anywhere up to positive 12 volts or down to negative 12 volts. Another thing to remember is that uh, the output here does not go all the way up to the positive rail or all the way down to the negative rail. It's about 2 volts away from both of those rails. So we are somewhat limited on our range, but it's no big deal. This is a demonstration circuit. Other op amps, some of them get to the rails, uh, at least the uh, negative rail, and uh, I think some also to the positive. But uh, that's something if you need, you have to look for an op amp that can do that. And now finally, let's, uh, let's zoom in so we can see what's going on a little bit. I have a jumper here. Usually I go over the uh, integrated circuit, but since we're going to take current measurements, I'm going to put that to the output right there. It's a good thing I don't have the uh, power on because I was uh, connecting directly to the positive rail. So we'll go over there and we should be all set. So let's uh, turn this on. When you hit the power button for this particular power source, that's the power at the output. And you can see the red LED is not very bright. And this is probably a couple milliamps short. It's not uh, spot on, but it is still pretty close. And you'll see that when I turn the trim pot more towards the positive rail, we get a higher current and a brighter LED when I turn it more negative. So you see current now and uh, a bright LED. You see less current because the LED blocks more voltage. That's one of the limitations. But uh, before the uh, LED starts blocking too much voltage, the uh, current is based on the voltage we are given to the non-inverting input. So we will look at that coming up. But there you can see, pretty straightforward. We get this more positive, there's more current. We get it more negative, there's actually, right here, there's almost no current going. And then you go lower, there's current, more current, almost no, there's more current. But the current's going in opposite directions. That's why one LED is lighting up versus the other, depending on where the output is. And now we got the multimeter. So, what we will do... We will uh, turn it on, and we're going to take a look at the voltage. So that's what I have it set there. Luckily, with this meter, there's only one place to put the red probe, unless you're measuring high current. But we're going to be staying at lower current, so that won't be a problem. Now, the voltages we're measuring are uh, really best to measure, starting with the uh, black probe there, at our virtual ground right there. And you can see if I go to this rail, we have positive 12 volts. If I go to that rail, we have negative 12 volts with uh, just a spec off, but that's negative 12 volts. So the uh, trim pot here is set, obviously a little more negative, probably by a few volts or something. There you can see negative uh, 0.25 volts, so hardly uh, any. I'm surprised that uh, LED's on actually. Let's turn it a little bit more. Now, let's, uh, oh, it kind of makes sense, because it was trying to give a little bit of current, so, let's, uh, look at that, so that's negative 3.3, basically, volts, a little less, so, if I remove this jumper, we can expect about, uh, negative 3.3 milliamps, I'll set the meter to measure milliamps. As I said before, I don't have to move the probe for this meter. Some meters you may have to. And so again, we're going to put the uh, black probe towards our virtual ground. And then red probe, I forgot to add this jumper. So I got a little jumper here. I'm going to put it to the uh, output right there. Just, it makes it a little easier to get a connection point. So somewhere about 3.2 milliamps we should expect about that. And there you can see 3.3. So that's actually closer to uh, the voltage we had when you divide it by a thousand. Now we're going to go more positive. And of course what we're doing, we're completing the circuit through the meter. The current that goes through the resistor, the LEDs also has to go through the meter. And the meter 
does not impact the current. And in this case, the LEDs don't really impact them. Uh, it's set by that resistor. Doesn't really impact the uh, total amount of current. So, now we're set a little more positive. We can look at the voltage again. Doesn't really matter. However you want to do it. Again, it's in relationship to our ground. Virtual ground. And it's at the inverting input. So lately, I haven't been having as good a luck with the positive voltages. But here we can expect somewhere a little less than 5.3 milliamps of current from the output to the uh, load. And uh, we connect that there. Finally got connection. So 4.8. And that's what I've been finding lately. It's somewhere around half of a milliamp off. But it still trails the voltage. So I don't know what's up with that. But uh, let's look again. Once I get, uh, there you go, get a connection. So 8.79. So I'm guessing it's probably about 8.3 volts or something. Right there. Again, we have to measure the voltage. And uh, that's in relationship to virtual ground there. And there, that one's not so bad, 8.7. So it looks like it gets better as you get closer to the rail. But in case, that's it. I think it's a pretty cool circuit. You can feed it a particular voltage. And if you use a 1000 ohm resistor, you'll have about one milliamp of current going through a load within limits, of course. And uh, no matter what the load is, the load can change. We can actually just get rid of these LEDs and uh, look at that with the meter. So let's go with the voltage again. And uh, that's right, I want to go there. So again, 8.7, that's what it was. And we'll go to a milliamp. So now there's no LEDs. I gotta go to the uh, resistor there. And there you can see, it's uh, about the same amount of current there. It looks like I got thrown off a little bit, but it's uh, pretty uh, close. So. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.